incredible research showing that if your vitamin D levels are, are over somewhere between around 50 is where we're looking at, that you're gonna be better at regulating your blood sugar. Pre-diabetics, diabetics, they have often have low vitamin D. So low vitamin D is going to make fasting that much more difficult for you. Dr. Mindy here, and on this video, I am gonna show you how something as simple as your vitamin D levels can affect what kind of benefits you get from fasting. Sit tight, because this is a whole nother level of fasting information. And those of you that are new to my channel, I just wanna say welcome. I am a woman on a fasting mission to get a million people fasting this year. So please hit the subscribe button, notification bell, and hopefully you'll see find hundreds of videos here that will serve you well on your fasting journey. So welcome. Those of you that have been with me a while, just greatly appreciate you and appreciate those of you that share this video out into the world. Okay, vitamin D. Now, I think you'd probably be have to live in a, in, in a cave to, <laughs> and not be on social media, which if you are watching this, you're obviously on social media, to not know that the hero, the vitamin hero of 2020 and 2021, and now I'm gonna say 2022, is vitamin D. Vitamin D can do so many things for your health. And I am going to link several studies. There's new studies that came out recently on autoimmunity that I'll talk about. There's incredible studies showing that if your vitamin D levels are higher, you, you are, are not going to have as bad as symptoms from COVID. We know that you need vitamin D for hormone health. The list is so long. If there was one vitamin, I would tell you over and over and over again, you have to get its vitamin D and it's free, just like fasting. You can get it from the sun. So let me dive into how this plays out so you understand it. First, I want you to understand that vitamin D, I think we used to think about it. I mean, I'm a, I'm, I was born in 1969, so I'm a 70s child. Um, and we used to think, oh, if you didn't drink your milk and you didn't have enough vitamin D, you would get rickets, like you would be something be wrong with your bones. Okay, hopefully, if you're still thinking of vitamin D like that, that you have evolved your understanding of vitamin D. If you haven't, let me explain a little bit of all the pieces vitamin D does. It supports proper immunity. So I'm gonna give some numbers here and we'll talk about uh, vitamin D numbers here. Statistically, if you have a vitamin D level of 12 or under and you get COVID, you are gonna be in serious, a serious place. That is gonna drive you to the hospital. If you are over 20 with vitamin D, your immune system and your protection against COVID is greatly increases. So the danger zone for COVID is between 12 and 20, or I should just say anything under 20, because if you're under 12, 12 is scientifically that spot that they've noticed, you are gonna have worse COVID symptoms. So we know for immunity, specifically COVID, we gotta keep vitamin D up. Hormonal health. Did you know that vitamin D is like a little boat for estrogen? It like carries, cruises estrogen like around your bloodstream so that it can get to all those cells. Well, you can be making estrogen, but if you don't have enough vitamin D to uh, take estrogen on a little cruise through your bloodstream, then it doesn't matter how much you produce because it won't get to the cells. Okay, autoimmunity. This study that was recently came, came out showed that over a series of several weeks, the number that they used is they had people do 2,000 IUs of vitamin D. And if you brought, did that every single day, that was through supplementation, that over, I believe it was about 12 weeks, I will put the link, the, the science in the notes, over a 12-week period, the number of symptoms and cases of autoimmunity went down by 22%. So your autoimmune symptoms can greatly go down if you increase your vitamin D. Okay, this is the fasting one. Incredible research showing that if your vitamin D levels are, are over somewhere between around 50 is where we're looking at, that you're gonna be better at regulating your blood sugar. Pre-diabetics, diabetics, they have often have low vitamin D. So low vitamin D is going to make fasting that much more difficult for you. 
Okay, heart disease, athletic performance, I could keep going on and on, but there is so many reasons why you wanna keep that vitamin D up. And here, for you guys that are fasting, this is why I wanted to bring you this video, is I want you to think about this. A lot of you are doing such an amazing job with your fasting lifestyle. But what happens is that you then are struggling to get into ketosis, or you message us and you say, I can't get my blood sugar down. I want you to start asking yourself, have I had my vitamin D checked? Do I know my vitamin D numbers? Because if you don't, then something as simple as adding in more vitamin D or getting more sunlight is going to make it so that you can bring that blood sugar down. That's literally how simple this can be. So what do you want your numbers to be? You want anything under 20 in my book is a crisis. So get your, your D checked every year. Your doctor should be able to do that. So anything under 20 is crisis. And then what you would want to do is add in supplement. And the studies have been done anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 IUs. You need to talk to your doctor about it. It is a fat soluble vitamin. So if you eat it with fat, you actually are going to get it to simulate into your body differently. And then of course, getting out in the sunlight and, uh, with as much skin showing as possible really can amp up your vitamin D levels. So you want it to be over 20 for sure. That's like bare minimum. You, if you, those of you that are in between 20 and 50, uh, this is kind of a big range. I would say that's generally good. It's kind of like, okay. It's not great, it's not horrible. Your doctor will probably tell you it's fine, but if you wanna to go to that next level of health, you wanna get it over 50. Remember, vitamin D carries these hormones through our system. So if you want the hormones to be carried, every single hormone from estrogen to insulin, if you want it to get carried through your bloodstream more efficiently, you really want it above 50. I've heard some hormone experts even say as high as 70. So this is your general amount that you wanna look at. And if you are not in, if you're under 20, to me that's crisis, you wanna really step it up and make that a top priority. Last thing, how much should you take? There's a couple good ground rules that I will tell you. Like I said, 1,000 to 2,000 IUs is probably a safe bet. Um, it's really up to you. You should chat with your doctor. Depends on where you are in this. A lot of, I know a lot of my functional medicine practitioners out there would say that's way too low. And I know a lot of my uh, traditional medical doctor friends would say, don't go more than 2000. So I'm just giving you sort of a, a, a range there. Okay, take it with vitamin K. That will help with the breakdown and absorption. Take it with fat. You guys, I teach you how to break fat, uh, a fast with fat break your fast with fat, and then um, take your vitamin D supplementation. It'll get into your system more efficiently. And then the next thing about vitamin D is really looking at how you can get it from sunlight because the sun is gonna give you a different access to vitamin D. When UVB rays hit your skin, it'll trans transfer that or translate that into vitamin D. So the more you're out in the sun, the more vitamin D you're gonna get. And then the last part about all of this vitamin D discussion is the more toxins you have, the harder it is for vitamin D to get into your cells. So if you've been taking vitamin D, if you've been getting out in the sun and you're still struggling, it's time. You're going to need to start to look at detoxifying it. In our detox program, we see this all the time where people pull toxins out and they're taking the same supplementation and all of a sudden they start getting above 50 with their numbers of vitamin D just because they remove toxins. So with vitamin D, we've got to come at it from a lot of different angles, which is why I'm telling you, eat it with fat, get in the sunlight, take your, the, the supplement with vitamin K and remove toxins. Now you've got a chance of really going at bringing your vitamin D levels up. But those of you that are, I'm struggling to get into ketosis, I can't get my blood sugar down, I don't know why I'm losing weight or not losing weight with, uh, with fasting, look at your vitamin D. It's time to start to look at your vitamin D as a potential enhancer of your fasting lifestyle or potentially a blocker of everything you're trying to get with fasting may be blocked from something as simple as low vitamin D. So as always, I hope that helps. 
If you've had a good experience getting your vitamin D levels up using these principles, please put it in the comments. I know this is like a, a little more of a unique ask from you guys, but if you've been playing with adding vitamin D in and you're noticing your blood sugars going down, you're noticing you're getting into ketosis more, please share it in the comments so that we can all learn from it. We are a community here on YouTube um, and I learn from you guys. I read your comments as much as you learn from me. We're all in this together. So as always, I hope that helps.